Good day. I'm Prince Alexander of Daventry. I'm an acquaintance of Princess Cassima. If you could just inform her that I'm here, please. Heh, <laughs> so everyone says. Let me just look at that ring. What does it say, Gruff? Kingdom of Daventry, Prince Alexander. Ah, wait here while I go see what Captain Saladin thinks of this. Captain Saladin. Ooh, look at him. The guard returns a moment later with a majestic looking creature. Captain Saladin speaks with a voice that is gentle, but reflects a will of iron. Prince Alexander of Daventry, I presume. <gasps> I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with your country, but I'm sure Wizir al Hazred will want to meet you, Recognize if indeed you are a friend of the princess. Frollo. Please, follow me. It's Frollo. Lord al Hazred, a visitor to see you. Prince Alexander of Daventry. What is it that you seek, Prince Alexander? Pardon the intrusion, my lord, but I came to see Princess Cassima. Some months ago, my father, King Graham, saved my family and I from imprisonment under an evil wizard named Mordak. The same wizard that kidnapped the princess? Exactly. When my father rescued us, he also liberated Cassima and sent her home. Then your father has my gratitude, and that of the entire kingdom. But I'm afraid I still fail to see the purpose of your visit. Oh, he, he mad. Oh. <clears throat> well, I Is came to make sure that Cassima arrived safely and to pay my respects. Before we parted, she gave me an invitation to visit. I have no doubt she did exactly that at the time, Prince Alexander. However, things have greatly changed for Cassima since her ordeal in Mordak's castle. Cassima's parents both became ill and died while she was gone. Cassima is sequestered in mourning for them as befits a princess. She is not receiving visitors of any kind. Ugh. Even if she were, I do not think your visit would be appropriate. You see, it is time for Cassima to take her responsibilities seriously. With her parents gone, she no longer has the luxury to be a carefree maiden. As was her parents' wish, Cassima and I are to be wed. Ugh. We shall rule the kingdom together. I assure you, our marriage is all Cassima wants now. Wow. As a prince and a gentleman, it would be best that you leave before there is any further embarrassment. I see. I suppose that I was mistaken. I thought for certain that Cassima... Well, I apologize. A young man sees what he wishes to see. <laughs> I'm sorry you've wasted your time traveling to the land of the Green Isles. May your journey home be swift. Perhaps I will take the opportunity to look around your fair land while I'm here. I would advise against that. The kingdom is rather, shall we say, inhospitable these days. But it is so your rude. neck. You may risk it if you please. Captain Saladin will escort you from the castle. Good day. <laughs> this guy's a jerk, right, guys? <laughs> what a butt! He's a stupid dumb You have butt. had your hearing with Wizir al Hazred. Yep. I trust you will respect his wishes and not return. Okay, I have been instructed not to let you into the castle again. Good day, my lord. Curses. Captain Saladin whispers something to the guard dogs at the castle gate, and they nod with understanding. Nope. <clears throat> I'm not getting back in there. Alexander has a feeling they won't be letting him into the castle again. Alright, let's look this way. The path from the crossroads continues north to the castle doors. 
A branch of the path leads off to the northwest, as though going around the castle. Let's go around the castle. Go. go. <laughs> hmm. Vines have begun to climb the castle's stucco walls. Can I climb the vines? Nope. The vines are too flimsy to support Alexander. Curses. The wall is quite solid. Alexander's hands would give way long before the wall did. <laughs> you just slap the wall. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the town. Da -da -da -da. Sorry, this music, man. I'm gonna see. Ooh. Oh. Poopies. Save. I'm gonna quit for now. I gotta go get ready. <laughs> Taking off your adventurer's cap so soon? Yes, I've had it! Okay. We're back. Uh, oh, I wonder if I should turn down the sound. Well, I'll break down a little bit. A little bit more, look. And these, before, Ki well, I guess I kind of had King's Quest, or the score in King's Quest 7. It was just different. It wasn't numbers. Um, I don't know if it this was in this game, but... I know in the previous games, there were literally things that you could do to make it impossible for you to finish the game. Like, you could sell something or get rid of something, and then that was it. You're just fucking screwed. You have to start over. <laughs> could you imagine getting close to the end and then doing something dumb and then realizing that you're screwed? Do you imagine it? Okay. Play. Let's go this way. Into this town. City. Oh, laps for you. Oh, laps for you. Oh, he's not saying it. <laughs> Let me talk to him. Hey, Grandpa. Good day, Peddler. Good day, sir. If you would like to get one of my fine new lamps, I'll need an old lamp in trade. Isn't it a rather bad business? Taking old lamps and giving new lamps in exchange? Well, there's always a chance that I'll find a genie. <laughs> if I had a genie, I'd be richer than a king. Besides, there's always a roaring business in antique luminaries. Yeah, when I was little I was like, what's a luminaries? <laughs> I don't have anything for you, bro. Um... Let's go in here. Old lamps oh, for goes. new! Old lamps for new! Hello. I will be right up. No, you won't. You now, me? what can I do for you? Alexander is standing in a cozy little shop. Books of every size and shape line the walls. A crackling fire in the fireplace completes the tranquil scene. There's a small table near the door that bears a sign. The sign has undergone a number of changes. It once read, 10 pence, but that was crossed out and replaced with 5 pence, then 1 pence, then free. <laughs> the sign currently reads, take one, please. <laughs> Only one book remains on the table. It looks like the bookshop owner really wants to get rid of that book. Yeah, I agree. Take it. Alexander picks up the book from the small table. Oh yes, please take that book. You have my most humble thanks for doing so good, sir. <laughs> Really? Thanks. Let's, let's look at let's look at our inventory. So we have a book, we have that and that. 
Alexander is carrying a book from the bargain table in the bookshop. <laughs> I'm dumb. Okay. What's this book? I'm gonna touch all the books. Alexander rests his feet for a moment. Alexander picks up and leafs idly through a book called The Changing Role of Court Entertainers Through the Ages. Meh. Well, that was refreshing. Yeah. All right, let's talk to this fellow. Good day, sir. I'm a stranger in this land. What can you tell me about the land of the Green Isles? That is quite a question, young man. Who are you, and what would you have me tell you? My name is Alexander. I know I'm on the Isle of the Crown, but I'd like to know whatever you can tell me about this island, and if there are other islands nearby. You are indeed a stranger. Anxious is the man who knows not the customs of the land beneath his feet. This island is called the Isle of the Crown, because the royal family's castle is here. Besides the castle, we also have this village, and the docks over to the west. There are at least three other islands. The Isle of the Sacred Mountain, the Isle of the Beast, and the Isle of Wonder. Hmm. At least three? Does no one know for certain? <laughs> this is no ordinary land, Alexander. The land of the Green Isles has always been a place of vague boundaries, as if islands come and go. Legend speaks of a fourth island, an isle shrouded in mists. I myself have never seen it. Then, too, the land of the Green Isles is said to exist on the boundaries of this world and the next. Even darker places are reputed to be closer here than anywhere else in the world. <sighs> That's quite a claim. <laughs> claim, yes, but probably just local superstition. We who live here on the Isle of the Crown, at least, sleep well enough at night. Those first three islands you mentioned, how might I learn more about them? Ideally, a young man seeking such knowledge would travel to their shores and learn about them firsthand. Meeting the leaders of each place would be helpful, naturally. Unfortunately, the ferry no longer runs between the islands. There has been much political unrest, and it has been too dangerous to travel for years. Perhaps the ferryman can tell you more. He has little enough to do these days. And if you haven't been there already, you might seek an audience at the castle. I've been there. Thank you kindly, merchant, for all your good advice. Ah, but advice is free, Alexander. Making use of it costs much more. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed it does. Let's talk to this guy. Random dude in a cloak. Ooh, Good ooh, day, yes. sir. <gasps> Did you see his eye? The mysterious old man just ignores Alexander. Did you see it sparkle? Look. Huh. It looks familiar. Alexander is not interested in those self-help books. <laughs> Thinking of Cosima, Alexander decides to leaf through one of the volumes of love poetry. He reads, Thy hair, thy lips, thy beauteous face, and all thy studied female grace have won for thee anon a place within this broken breast. Not bad. Mm. And another. Upon the shore the lilies bend, untouched by worldly care, where shadow they her earthly bed, oh, that she were not there. Yikes! And another. What was it when I looked at you? What power has chained me through and through, and binds my heart with links so tight I cannot live without the sight of you? What nameless thing has captured me? and made me powerless to flee. What thing is it without a name that brings my mind e'er back the same to thee? 